How do you check? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Boy, I sounded good over the PA. I might be taking Sean Fafaro's job here, folks. Thanks for tuning into the webcast. We'll be with you shortly.
Good evening and welcome to the Kitchener Memorial Auditorium for tonight's National Basketball League of Canada matchup between the KW Titans and the visiting Cape Breton Highlanders. Good evening everyone, I'm Dan Paulsha bringing you tonight's play-by-play -play commentary. Floor aside here is KW looking to get a win their fourth of the season before departing on a season high six game road trip. Cape Breton on the other hand coming into this one after an impressive victory over the Magic a few days ago and having traveled here to Ontario to begin a four game road trip. Looking to take it one game at a time as coach Rob Spahn mentioned before their departure and looking to get a little closer to evening their record which sits at 7 and 11. Looking at tonight's starting lineups for the visiting Cape Breton Highlanders, it'll be Bruce Massey, this week's Atlantic Division Player of the Week, Antonio Biglow, Tydron Beatty, Duke Mondi, and Shane Osayande out of the University of Saskatchewan and out of Toronto, Ontario as well, making his return a little closer to home here at the Yard. On the other side for the home side, the KW Titans going with Tremar Sutherland, Ahmad Starks, Greg Morrow, Kevin Rogers, and Derek Hall coming off a 21 rebound effort in that home loss against Niagara just on Saturday night as Hall leads the Titans onto the floor to take tonight's tip off. And as well as Derek Hall has been playing, they need the supporting cast to step up here, do the KW Titans as well. And looking at this Cape Breton roster, it's coming into form a little bit with the addition of Bruce Massey there in middle of December, but they've got the, the nation's sixth leading scorer as well in Duke Mondi, averaging 20 points a game. So we'll see what they can produce here on the first leg of this four game road trip as we're underway here in Kitchener. Glad you're along with us live on YouTube. I encourage you to use the live chat function on the sidebar of the YouTube viewer. Get your comments, thoughts, and even predictions if you like on tonight's ball game. I'll get to those throughout tonight's broadcast as is possible. There's a quick two right off the hop for Bigelow to begin things for the Highlanders. Greg Morrow, London native, driving baseline line cut off nicely by Massey. And off to Rogers, who's been a treat here for KW, still playing through a, a bit of a knee injury, that left knee, rather at his right, in fact. Not a, quite 100%, but you have to appreciate his effort fighting through that, as is Titans head coach Serge Langes, to be sure. Here's Massey. One bounce pass. Fade away, Jay. That's a nice looking shot. Smooth uh, by Tydron Beatty as he gets on the score sheet. 4 0 Islanders here with Ahmad Starks pulling up and dropping off for Rogers. Inside it goes to Hall. Nice dish off to Sutherland in the corner for the three. That falls, and there's your first three ball of the night, courtesy of Tremar Sutherland getting the Titans on the board. Beatty pull up Jay. That's a deep two for him, and that won't go. Rather, that was would have been a three had he been able to have that fall. Now, spin around Jay. That's a good-looking shot from Rogers. Baylor University grad gives the Titans their first lead of the ballgame. Still early here, just less than two minutes in. 5-4 KW. Off the screen, Massey. Pulls up. One-on-one -on -one with Morrow. Morrow, a tough defender. He's going to show it right here. Step for step. Tips that away in the turnover. Gathered in by Sutherland. Finds Starks on the fly. Quick crossover. He works to the middle of the key. Pull up Jay wide open. Rims out. It's a shot he usually makes. On the counter. And there's a foul call. Put back. Obviously no good on that one. But it's the Highlanders going to line for two. Duke Mondi on a transition hoop attempt. We'll get the two free throws. Mondi on the season, an 84% free throw shooter.
started started all 18 games aside from one this campaign. Restores his Highlanders lead. Starks. Rogers for three. That'll go. Kevin Rogers up quickly to five points. As we go back and forth here in the early going. Bigelow gets a return pass. Drops it off. Another three. That look is good. And Tydron Beatty drains that to respond to Kevin Rogers. Trey a second ago. Rogers off the screen. Pulls up. Top of the key. That'll go. Tougher shot there for Ahmad Starks. But he has it fall. Now wide open down low. And swat there from Rogers. Sutherland. Morrow now on the fly. Highlanders do well to get back defensively. Starks off the window. And the teardrop goes. Nice sequence from the Titans as Rogers got back. Got the denial and then the outlet pass to get things going for the Titans the other way. Big low left wide open. That one doesn't go for him. Good look for number five. And now here's Ahmad, or rather Kevin Rogers. Morrow pulls up, finds Hall. Now they're going to reset things here a little bit. Rogers one on one. Step back, Jay, for Rogers. That doesn't go. Rebound, Massey. Massey, using his speed, bumps off Morrow, gathers in his own rebound, working baseline on Morrow, the second year player, and that time, Massey gets the best of him, gets the Highlanders back within one. That's tipped, the Sutherland pass, nearly results in a turnover, but Morrow able to save it for his teammate. Hall, quick look, drives by Beatty, cut off there with the help defense, and but he's able to convert it. Off the glass and in for him as Derek Hall finds a score sheet. That long range shot for the Highlanders doesn't fall, but a foul on the play. And that's going to go on Kevin Rogers, I do believe. And yeah, that'll be his first personal and headed to the line. The aforementioned Shane Osayande. Osayande, one of the Canadians on this roster, as I mentioned, and averaging just shy of 13 points a game on the campaign. It's good for one of two from the stripe. Inside it goes, Rogers. Looking over his right shoulder, seeing what he's got. Sullivan now. Things getting crowded down there in the blocks, and that's going to be five seconds. And you can hear the holler here from Coach Langis of the Titans asking, what are they doing? And in that instance, I think Sullivan had to clear out. So miscommunication burns KW for a turnover. And here are the Highlanders looking to tie it up or take the lead on this possession. That shot doesn't go. Sutherland comes back with some strong defense. Hand on the face of the shooter there. Lobbed inside. Just tipped away at the last second. Beatty able to get a fingertip on it before it got to the seven-footer Hall. And here is Uncle Ed Horton as he was called back in his days with the London Lightning. The veteran back in the fold with KW. Having played his first game back anyways this past Saturday and that inbounds pass is no good from Starks but they're going to say that the Highlanders player there far sideline and that is Mondi stepped out of bounds and that's Rich Stelic making the call and that's a good segue to, not, to bringing the names of this officiating crew it's Chris Delaney the crew chief which with alongside Rich Stelic and Greg Spagnoli Making up the trio now, Stelic and Delaney are going to get together here. Fourteen, twelve, Titans, two-point lead. Rogers, better looking inbound play there for KW. Starks pull up J baseline. That'll go. 
Almond Starks putting up some points. They haven't come easy, or in the easiest of forms anyways, but he's drained those shots. Worked around here by the Hollanders. Beatty. Big low. Beatty's shot doesn't go, and Horton with the board for KW. Stark slowing it down a little bit, works to the left side, pull up three. Morrow, go gathering the long rebound off the miss. Now Holland's side. Nice dish for Morrow. Horton thought about it, hesitated. Now he's got some traffic to deal with. Drove the lane, and now a foul called. And Horton's go gonna go to the line. And that's gonna be Beatty's first personal. KW again coming off that 103, 96 loss. Another tough fourth quarter where they gave up 28 points. They outscored Niagara. But that third quarter was really their undoing. Outscored 31-22. Horton just the five minutes and 24, the five points and 24 minutes of play in that one. Went two for 10 as he just wrapped up his season in Nicaragua. Back here in the NBL of Canada. 18-12 off those free throws for KW and a good take in response by Beatty. And that's gonna be Derek Hall with a foul call and we'll have a timeout on the floor with the KW Titans leading it by six over to the visiting Highlanders on first responders appreciation night here in Kitchener. Not only a decent gathering here on a Wednesday night in Kitchener, recognizing police, firefighters, paramedics, and all first responders here at the odd. As that was police chief Ryan Larkin taking the ceremonial tip off before tonight's ball game with the Toss there from the seven footer Derek Hall. Glad you're along with us here on YouTube. Dan Paulschuk bringing this to you solely here tonight. Usual broadcast partner Ian Jodry on assignment tonight. Unable to join us, but we'll get through this together, shall we? As we certainly like to entertain as well your comments, feedback, and commentary as what makes these broadcasts so fun for us and hopefully for everyone tuning in at home. KW has been a tough stretch for them. Serge Lange is certainly feeling the heat from some fans, and so are the players, obviously. They're looking to right sh the ship a little bit, and not only is this game, but this extended road trip coming up is going to be a big one for them. But by the time it's all, all of a sudden done, we're going to be halfway through the NBL of Canada's schedule for KW, at least. Hard to believe at that point the season is already upon us. Looks like Denzel James is going to check in for KW out of that TV timeout. And so stepping up to the line here, B after that foul call just before the timeout. BD misses his first. Just 68% from the line this season. He drains that one. Beatty with some time spent in the G League with Texas. Joined the Highlanders roster back in late November. This is 6'7", 205 pounds out of Union, South Carolina. And the 28-year-old actually played for the Harlem Globetrotters for a couple years. But that 7-2 wingspan of, hand, uh, of his certainly helps on the defensive side of things especially. Didn't help the Highlanders there in that instance though as KW 
draining another bucket, making it 21-13 in favor of the home side. 5-16 to go in the opening frame. Spitting. Oziani, that's a tough move inside, but he finishes it off cleanly. Gets another pair for Kate Breton. Starks looking for a response. Defenders playing up high on him. Decides to take the shot himself. Off balance. It doesn't go for him. And Islanders with the board. Errant pass. As it was Bigelow trying to find Beatty. Just underneath the basket. Now wide open. Kevin Rogers slams it home. And the Titans now. Piecing together a bit of a run. 23-15. KW shooting just around 70% at this point. Cape Breton hovering around the 36% mark. Starks, nice crossover pull up Jay and that'll go. Not quite the ankle breaker that we've seen on plenty of those highlight videos on YouTube, but that was coming close as that one worked to perfection. Gaining some space for Starks to take that shot from the free throw line essentially. Loose ball. Wide open, three, all day to let that one fly. Oseyande doesn't miss there. He's up to four now. First free uh, three-pointer of the night. 25-18, hard screen there. And Starks will drain that. And from the floor, Biglow was still looking at the official, not happy with the non-call. Mondi, cut off baseline, Horton. Now Roger steps in and a bit of a push. And it's Horton that's gonna get on the foul call. and. Checking back in, a recent addition to the Highlanders and a former Titan at that, Rick Botterford, now wearing number six for the Highlanders, along with Kevin Lazell, the Montreal Quebec native. And Botterford gets a bit of a, an applause here from these Titan fans. It was a frustrating stay for him to be sure here in KW and looking to salvage what he can of this NBL Canada season. Just couldn't get it pieced together here in Serge Langes' system. And certainly would credit him. Chatting with, uh, with the opportunities I had to chat with him on the side, he was never one to seemingly get verbally frustrated in terms of his role or whatnot. Tried to fight through, it just didn't work out here in Kitchener. And certainly would hope to see a veteran of the league. And there's a hard screen. And it's gonna be a charge being called as that was Loisel setting that, and that's for Starks, like running into a brick wall. Starks listed at 5'9", if that, that's a generous 5'9", running into the 6'6", Kevin Loisel. And now Starks gonna head off, getting a quick check in with Coach Langes, saying he's okay, he's okay. So that's a good sign. Dropped off for Arsenault, checks in and also checks in with a three as soon as he does so. 32-18 now, high pass gathered in by Massey. Massey just two points so far, nice rotation. Now work back inside, Massey pump fake, floats it in there. Some good ball movement from the Highlanders in that sequence. Gets him up to 20 now on the night. Arsenal slows it down. Finds Darren Duncan now. Biglow draped all over him. Duncan will get the screen from Arsenault. And it's Biglow, foul call on him. And we're gonna get a substitution now. Uh, a pair of substitutions in fact, as both Joey Miller come in and uh, Ali Ahmed in for KW to give Paul a bit of a breather is Nigel Titer, who's quickly become a fan favorite in KW. A big presence in the blocks and for Islanders fans who don't know much about him or see him in action, you're gonna get a dose of it right now. Does not shy away from the physicality and certainly tougher defense to handle. And there you see what he's done more of, as of late is rack up the points. Really limited playing time off the bench, but he's been rewarded. Been given some crucial tasks and opportunities. There's 
Rick Bonneford, a bit of a homecoming for him as he silences this crowd at least momentarily with the three ball. 34-23 now, KW on top. Duncan steps back. Tighter can't handle that pass. Other way it goes, and Massey sees some good speed, and they're going to count the basket there initially as the putback attempt was there as well. And now a timeout being called by Kozlangis of the Titans with 1.33 to go in the opening quarter of play. Titans coming up hot out of the gate in this one. But that's been the, really the trend in recent games. It's more their finish that's been the question mark for KW. We saw them really battling a couple games ago before that Niagara loss here on their home court against the Moncton Magic. Coming off a win against St. John's, they were feeling pretty good and that game against Moncton was certainly shaping up to possibly create a back-to-back -back win scenario. But the last two minutes of play for them, everything came crashing to a resounding halt. Fouls, turnovers, and just lack of defense was their undoing as they fell ultimately 110-99 in what was a tie ball game with less than two minutes remaining. Titans the lowest scoring team in the NBL Canada. Cape Breton not far behind them though in that respect. Off the inbounds down the timeout, 130 to go here in the first quarter. Titans lead it by nine. Horton as a second unit on for KW at the moment, as well as partially for the Highlanders. Titer takes a baseline and a push there is there you see the damage he can do when he puts his shoulder down, goes up against these defenders. He is really, as Coach Langes has called him, a beast down low in the blocks. Fourth team foul there. And that went off the foot of Horton. Tighter there to back him up though. Duncan, in tight quarters, is able to work out of it. One on one with Miller. Pull up Jay, contested shot, doesn't fall, tipped up there as it was also a contested rebound and the man on the floor who finds himself on the hardwood is tighter. And it's gonna be tighter with the foul call on him. As well as Ali Ahmed. So a double foul call on the play is both players going up and now they're gonna sort out how this is gonna work out with possession. They're going to call it a jump ball, so they'll get things organized for this. And Checking out the comments here quickly on the live chat. Titan superfan Sandra Lukatic certainly making a, a keen observation. Titans, as of late, have been getting those good starts and some good quarters. It's just the consistency that hasn't been there for the second-year franchise. And really, they need to piece this thing together as they focus on really, at this point, just getting into the playoffs that's the best case scenario. Their goal at the outset of the season was playoffs, above 500 record, at least a series win. Still some work to do. As there, Miller fell, but able to hand it off to Massey. And now another body flying as Bod or Duncan rather got knocked down by Tutter. And when they collided, the three goes for the Highlanders. And now quick whistle. As now the Highlanders with back-to-back -back buckets making a 34 28 Titans lead just 30 seconds remains in the first quarter of play Duncan Arsenal pull up jumper well off the mark and a loose ball gathered by Massey Massey with speed goes right at Duncan exactly what you want to do the two number ones going at it and it's the one that was handling the ball at the 
that point in time that gets the better of the KW Titans version. Here's Miller on the inbounds. Shot clock turned off with 15 seconds to go in the frame. Miller dunking on him. Miller gets the highest screen from Ahmed. Works the right side, met by Titer. Shot off the side of the backboard and that's not exactly how the Highlanders likely drew it up. And that's gonna be a Titans basketball they're saying. And now they're gonna get together, Greg Spagnoli and Rich Stelic. And I think they're going to reverse this ball, or this call rather, and yes, it will be Hollander's ball now. So they call out their inbounds play with 3.9 on the clock. Miller, nice pass inside. The finish isn't nearly as pretty as that's the lay-in that Ahmed really should have drained from that vicinity. But the Titans are thankful for the miss as they lead it 34-28 after the initial quarter of play here in Kitchener. The Titans looking for win number four as the Cape Breton Highlanders begin their road trip looking for win number eight on the season. We'll be back with the start of the second quarter in just a few moments time. Welcome back to the Kitchener Memorial Auditorium where it's the KW Titans leading the Cape Breton Highlanders 34-28 as we begin the second quarter of play. Your game high scores up to this point, Amon Starks and Kevin Rogers both with 10 apiece as the KW Titans have been staked to the six point lead. And it's Bruce Massey Jr. with the nine to lead his team along with four rebounds. Nice dish inside to Jamal Reynolds, who's in the ballgame now. The other Toronto native on this roster and certainly could hear some friends and family right behind my broadcast booth, giving a round of applause after that latest bucket. Down to a four-point Titans lead. They led us by as many as 14 at one point. And that's dwindled a little bit as their shooting's gotten a little drier. Still, though, shooting 66% after one quarter of play. And there is another bucket for the Highlanders. That time it was Ahmed. Rogers just hands off to Duncan now. Rogers being guarded by Loiselle. Duncan, step back Jay, doesn't go. Miller with the rebound. Electing to take the three, and that's a good decision by Loiselle. And the Canuck getting his first points of the night with the three ball. And the Highlanders have come all the way back to take a one point lead now, 35-34. Duncan, shoulder down. Sullen, open look, three in the corner. Misses everything. And the rebound, or rather the air ball gathered by Reynolds. Rick Botterford, just the one basket so far in his return to the odd here. As he slips and falls. 
Ahmed's roller, the fingertip roll will go. It's a bit of help there from the rim. Now a three point Highlanders lead. Bit of a run, let's begin the frame here for the East Coast team. And we'll see how this trip goes for KW. Duncan spinning away, finds Starks. Starks on the screen from Titer. That'll rattle in. And that's the response Coach Langes and Cole were looking for from their offense. They get it back within one. Miller walks it up. Now drops it off. Loisel, back-to-back -back threes for 13. And he's jacked up after those consecutive long distance shots. Four point Highlanders lead. There's Ahmad Starks though with one of his own. And the Titans with another three. That's their fifth of the night. They're five for seven on the evening. And that one drifts out of bounds on the errant pass. Turnover Highlanders. And both teams protecting the basketball pretty well in that opening frame. Just four apiece. Titans looking to regain the lead here on this possession. Duncan driving hard to the hoop. And he's fouled as he went up. That was Ahmed coming over on the help defense, swatted away, but before that, the foul caught Duncan midair, and he'll head to the stripe. And Duncan, for him, this is her first trip to the line here tonight. Titans, a 71% free throw shooting team, and Duncan Pretty lights out himself though, individually 83% as he drains both. And we've got ourselves a tie ball game. Big low back in for the Highlanders as Miller takes a seat. 8.44 to go here in the first half. 41-40, KW. Wazell, Botterford, he pulls up for the three and that'll go. That's three in a row for the Highlanders. As was a, or rather Botterford with a couple words drifting away. You can tell he's probably a little fired up in his return. Reynolds on the fly and one. It will be the call from the official. He'll get a chance for that momentarily. But some good speed there from Reynolds catching the Titans defenders a step too slow. And now he has a chance to give Cape Breton their biggest lead of the ball game. Reynolds settles in, and it will remain a four-point Highlanders lead. This so far matches their biggest lead of the night. Hall working hard and demanding that pass inside. Here he goes, one-on-one. -on -one. Ball fake. Dishes off for Rodgers. He pulls up for the three. That'll go. Kevin Rodgers with another three. As he's now three for three from beyond the arc. Loisel, nice pump fake from him, drives the lane off the window and out. Ahmed with the follow-up, no thing doing, but again, Hall can't put two hands on it. Now foul down low as Duncan was scrambling defensively. Second chance opportunities for the Highlanders, and at the very least, they've got a free throw shot coming up. Or rather, an inbound with that foul coming on the floor. Beattie checking back in, replacing Ali Ahmed. Inbounds, inlet pass, mishandled by Bonneford. Wasn't the best of passes for him to try and haul in. Now Duncan, floating it in, won't get it on the roll. Bonneford with the rebound, goes the other way. Has Bigelow, a hot pass, trying to lead Bonneford, and he nearly ran into the defender. I think he was more worried about crashing into him. And Loisel will get the foul call on him. Lazelle, the former Windsor Express and London Lightning player. 
took part in the Indonesian Basketball League All-Star Game in 2017. That certainly has been around this league. And there is Darren Dunkel with another 3 for KW. They live and die by the three due to the Titans in a row. Right now, they're living large. There's a pull-up three. And what a job by Kevin Lazell. That's another three for him. This man is absolutely on fire from long distance. Duncan, as we go back and forth here. Lay in there and a put back by Hall. Titans back up by one, 49-48, 6.25 left in the first half. Stutter step and the charge called on the Highlanders as Ahmad Stark's got some good positioning. And that's going to go all against Loisel and he's having some words with the official. And now head coach Rob Spahn has to get up from his seat and Loisel is going to get burned with a technical as he went at the official. Teammate is trying to get in between himself and the referee, Greg Spagnoli. Wazell continuing and that earned him the technical now up to four personals, and he's going to take a seat for a while. Unfortunate for him. Technical assessed to the and now we have a bench technical. So things unraveling a little bit here for the Highlanders. Duncan drains the first free throw, stemming from that. So just as Loiselle was heating up big time, or really just on fire overall with three-point shots he's been making. Did a bit of chirping and that's earned him another foul after he was burned for a foul call. And now the Titans very fortunate as he's had to head off and he's gonna spend some time on the bench watching the action instead of playing it. 51-48 now, KW. Off those free throws, Duncan. Inside to Hall. He's bodied there and Hall will have it fall but they're gonna wave this off. So unfortunate there for Derek Hall and KW. Bigelow walks it up with Starks. Keep an eye on him. Worked over here for Monty inside for Botterford. The two teammates going at it. They're down low now. Dropped off. That three will rattle in for Dihydron Beatty. And this is the second of the night. That intended pass tipped up in the air. Duncan went straight up for it. Gathered it in. Swift speed to the hoop. That's denied. It's Sutherland with a putback lay in. He's got to finish that. Quite frankly, that's a miss that he's gonna be thinking about. So miss points there, and the result is a missed shot at the other end. The Titans fortunate in that sequence. All square at 51. Just about five minutes to go in the second quarter. Starks, Rogers, Botafrick did well to challenge him. Now Duncan in the corner, that doesn't go. Rebound, Botiford quickly up. And that lay-in doesn't go as Rogers able to challenge that Mondi lay-in and Rogers still back on the play. Mondi as well. Rogers looks to be okay. Might have looked to be a potential foul there as he came across to try and swat it away. Either way, now Rogers looks like he's laboring a little bit. We mentioned that knee injury he's been kind of working through. And there Bonifer with another bucket because Keep right in the 53-51 lead. Rogers again, a little slower here. We'll see whether someone will be coming in here for him shortly. No Starks off the screen from Hall. They're going to call that an illegal screen. Hall stuck out his hip just a little bit. And that's Derek Hall's second personal as we'll have a TV timeout here with 4.28 to go in the first half. And Rob Spahn after the... Two technical fouls being called, one on Loiselle, the other on the bench, comes over, and now Loiselle 
coming over to have a discussion with his head coach and the crew chief looking for an explanation perhaps as much on the first foul call that got was all frustrated but more so on the second thought he had the ability to air his grievances and the official who teed him up breaks back only thought he got a little too overzealous in that respect and now after the explanation from Chris Delaney, Loiselle still trying to plead his case now to his head coach, who's with a couple of pats on the back trying to calm him down a little bit. So some dramatics here, some emotions being shown by the Highlanders, but some playing good basketball on top of all that coming back to take this two-point lead, which is minutes remaining in the first half of play, 53-51. And that's certainly been aided by their slick shooting from beyond the arc. Came into the quarter just four for nine. But that has certainly improved in this frame. Dan Palsha calling you for this one for you from the odd in Kitchener. Glad you're along with us, with myself here on YouTube. Titans get off to another hot start in the first quarter of play. Kevin Rogers already shooting it pretty well, but limited in terms of his opportunities here in the second quarter. Here's Bigelow. Out of the timeout. Out of bounds it goes. Be inbounded again. High pass gathered in. Catch and shoot three attempt. That will get some love. Well, it looked like he was going to get some love from the backboard and the rim. But then a Hollanders player went up for the tip put back. And now Kevin Rogers will get burned for his third personal and he's gonna head off. Clapping frustration as Kyle Arsenal comes in. Cape Breton now nine for 15 in fact from beyond the arc. Kitchener, Waterloo, seven of 12. Kevin Rogers thus far just held to three points in the second quarter. Starks just five after 10 points apiece in the first. Rick Botterford leading all Highlander scorers and rather that's, that's a good storyline if you're looking for any at this point, the return of Rick Botterford after being traded. Arsenal, Starks, three, yes, Ahmad Starks with another three ball from him and he's two for four. One point Highlanders lead now, 55, 54. Worked over here near side, Massey, nothing inside the blocks. Try to get it on the one bounce pass over to Osiande, but tipping it out of bounds was Kyle Arsenault. Arsenault, the U Sports graduate. There's a fadeaway J, and that's a pretty looking shot from Duke Mondi. As Mondi's up now to four points. Limited playing time for him so far. Oh, eight minutes played. Morrow. He's going to settle in for a three. That one rattles out. Hall looking for a rebound. Getting that big wingspan in the way. Off the leg of Arsenal as trying to knock it out of bounds off of uh, Arsenal was Tudrin Beattie. That didn't work out as planned. Now the foul call against the Highlanders. And that's going to go against Shane Oseyande. And an inbounds for Starks. Cleared up, up top for Morrow. Swings it over for Starks. Now for Arsenal. That won't go. Good positioning down low. Oseyande with the defensive board. And here come the Highlanders. 
Morrow on him defensively. Massey. That shot will find nothing but net. And the Atlantic Division Player of the Week continues his strong play. 11 points for him. And Starks with a deep two. And Starks now out of that timeout. A quick five points for him. He's up to 20. Foul on Hall. And for Derek Hall, that's going to be his third personal. And this is going to be an interesting decision here by Coach Langes. Do you have Hall play the last 219 carrying those three fouls, or do we go a little smaller here? Yep, and it looks like Nigel Titer is going to check in here. Although Morrow was heading to the table at first, but it's going to be yes, Nigel Titer for Hall. Nigel Titer in just five minutes played just two points. As is Beatty with his first free throw attempt. Knocks it down. Beatty was the Cape Breton Highlanders player of the game in that 116 104 win over Moncton on Saturday at the center 200. Biggest lead of the game now for the Highlanders. Up five, 61-56. Two minutes to go. Morrow, a step back three from the corner. Check that, a long two, says Rich Stellick. As the Western University grad gets it within three. Not for long, though, as there's a nice alley-oop connection. Beatty slams it home. And it's back to a five-point Highlanders lead. A buck 45 left here in the second. Arsenault hands off to Starks. That's a deep three. That's a challenge shot. A tough one for Starks to even think about making there. Morrow has it tipped out of his grasp, and the reach and foul is going to be called on Antonio Bigelow. And Shamar Sutherland, with 126 to go in the quarter, will check in for Kyle Arsenault. Antonio Bigelow out of Los Angeles, California, 28 years old, and a Montana State University grad. Averaged just shy of nine points a game in his over the course of a junior and senior career in the NCAA. And that one will roll in. And again, Duke Mondi voicing how fired up he is. And Morrow and a block call against the Highlanders and the bunch up in arms that there was no charge call against the Titans. Now Morrow instead will head to the free throw line. And Greg Morrow, still scoreless, has a chance to get himself on the score sheet. He and Denzel James remain the lone Titans without any points to their names tonight. And that's just changed. Morrow, 77% free throw shooter, eight points a game in roughly 23 minutes per game. Drains his second. 65-60. As the Highlanders look to close out this quarter strong. And now with 101 to go, we've got another foul call. This one against Ed Horton. That's his second personal. Now the Titans with none to give. Already bonus situation with the Highlanders. Massey off the inbounds. Ondi, nice lob in there, another alley-oop. Osayande flushing that home. Tider was on him defensively. Uh, Osayande was able to just shrug him off there. That's tough to do against the big man, Tider. Now the Titans down by seven. And a costly turnover there. This is going to be an easy two. And laying it home. No, it's going to be knocked away. But they're going to count the bucket on the goaltend. 
valiant effort there by Amaro to hustle back, but a step too late or a half step too late. And as Massey heads to the bench, gives a little raise to the roof to these KW fans, as it's certainly a quieter bunch than it was in the first quarter play here at the Kitchen Memorial Auditorium. He's certainly not going to earn many fans, but hey, he's got plenty of fans around the league. There's Massey, 6'3 guard out of Middle Tennessee. And Germantown, Maryland. But a bad turnover there by KW, and at the very least, they want to head to the locker room remaining just down by single digits. 36.1 seconds to draw some, or to have something develop here. So 12 second deferential, if you do the math, between game clock and shot clock. KW now having started the game at just around 70% shooting, have drifted towards reality now, 57% shooting for the game, or rather 55%. Cape Breton just around that mark as well, 57% shooting for them. And certainly the this 83% second quarter from the floor will help the cause. Now the timeout, it's Starks and Titer setting up the screen. Over here for Horton. Morrow for three. Back rim and out. High board gathered in by Beatty. Now Beatty hands off Bigelow. Mondi happy to work some time off his clock. One on one with Morrow stepping in. Sutherland, and that's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Sutherland, it looks like. So a two second differential. Seven seconds on the shot clock. And this is Denzel James. Looking for some help defensively here are the Titans. As they go into Demo, that one lobbed in and right over the head of Oseyande. But it drift back for that one. Four seconds. The J doesn't go. The put back. Oseyande, they'll check that, but I think it's good. They're going to count the basket. And what a second quarter here from the Highlanders. Down by as much as 14 at one point. They now lead it by 11 going into halftime. 71-60 over the KW Titans. And they certainly pieced together a better second half of this first half. What's the response going to be from KW here on First Responders Night at the Odd? We will see with the start of the second half in about 15 minutes' time.
Welcome back to the Kitchener Memorial Auditorium for the start of the second half with the KW Titans finding themselves down 11, 7160 to the visiting Cape Breton Highlanders taking a look at your half quarter stats. It's Ahmad Starks of the Titans leading all scorers with 20 points, two assists in 21 minutes of action. Kevin Rogers though held to just three points in that second frame after a 10 point first quarter. Darren Duncan, the third best scorer on the title, uh, Titans with seven points, although four of those points coming from the free throw line. He's just one of six from the field in 11 minutes of play. The Titans as a whole shooting 53% after a 38% second quarter. That followed up a uh, first quarter where they were shooting 70% from the field and 80% from beyond the yard. Four for five in the first quarter, four of 12 from three in the second. For Cape Breton is Tydron Beatty with 13, Shane Osayande with 12, and Rick Bonneford on his return to KW after starting the season with the Titans. 10 points on 100% field goal shooting, four for four and two for two from beyond the arc. Cape Breton after a 47% First quarter shooting, 68% in that second frame, good for 58.7% overall as the Titans cough it up on their first possession of the second half. Dished off down low and unable to convert is Beattie. And the Titans sure are lucky there. And notice one comment, Kevin Loisel before being called on the foul and then teed up. There is a nice reverse lay-in. Almost a jam there from Kevin Rogers as he starts things off offensively and gets the Titans back within nine. Kevin Wallazell was three for three from beyond the arc on three for four shooting overall, nine points, and then got burned for the foul and then continued the chirping at the official. He wasn't happy about it, got teed up, and then just seconds after as he was headed to the bench, another bench foul. Fortunately for him, it was a bench foul avoiding the double technical. So that's where we stand now, 73-62. Cape Breton, another turnover. Sullivan coughing up the lay-in slam, and Beatty gets right in the grill of Morrow, flexing his pipes afterwards. And a foul call as well. Morrow just kind of shakes his head and walks away. All he can do in that instance as the Titans get together at the free throw line and talk things over. Beatty, after that easy lay-in miss, now he's going to nice, and this is a veteran move by the official. I'm saying, you know, he comes away with a smile, but maybe he's just saying, you know what, that's that's a great play, but maybe just cool it a little bit with the celebrations afterwards. Beattie finishes the and one, 76-62. Cape Breton now with a 14-point lead. Starks. Looking to get it going here offensively. Or lead his troops offensively. Now Hall playing with three fouls. They swing it around. Rogers looking for an outlet. Now works it down. The left-handed floater. That'll roll in. Kevin Rogers now quickly. Another five points to start the second half for him. He's up to 18. Or rather, four points, I should say. Mondi pull up three. Mondi's three will go. And for Duke Mondi, he's now one for five from beyond the arc. Struggles early on from that distance, but nails in that time. Now Morrow, catch and shoot three from the corner. Back rim and out. Front rim, rather. And now with a 15-point lead, Highlanders looking for more. Pull up Jay from the free throw line. And that's Big Low draining it. Not a good start to the second half for the Titans. A 10 to four run here to begin the third for the Highlanders. Starks, jab step, gets the screen from Rogers, works it to his left, nothing there. Back to Rogers, swing it over once more. Sutherland, corner three, off the mark, off the hand of Hall. And that's gonna go out of bounds again. So it's gonna be a Cape Breton ball. Both teams with 10, 10 turnovers a piece in the first half. Big low. Shakes off Starks, pull up Jay, doesn't go, rebound Rogers. Starks crosses over, one touch pass, Sullen inside a hole, and the big man gets fouled. 
need to be doing more of that. Beatty getting the foul call on him. With that foul coming on the floor, it'll be Starks to inbound for KW. Hall. Was looking back for the counter to Starks as he looked outside and cut back inside. But the pass intended for him was tipped away. Morrow will try one more time this time on the set. Morrow finds Starks. He's bodied here by Massey. Another three attempt, and that will get some love from the rim and a bit of help from the window. Ahmad Starks again with another three. He's three of six from the distance. Nice spin move and one coming from Bruce Massey here momentarily potentially as he finishes it off that penny, a pretty spin move. And now Massey Jr. up to 13. Five boards. Improving right there why he was named the player of the week. And Massey certainly does it all. Great defender. He can shoot the three, which he's done just once tonight. And obviously just a good presence for the rest of the roster having played in the higher ranks in the G League and whatnot. Massey pull up three, that'll go. And Massey is on fire at the moment. And he's understandably fired up as well. Fist pump, leg kick, and a jump up collision with one of his teammates coming off the bench to show his support. The KW Titans down 20 now. Lots of time to go in this ball game, but for KW already. 16 points against in this third quarter. And we're barely four minutes into it. Others outscoring KW 16-7 so far with 8.13 to go in the third. As we've seen strong play by Beatty and Massey Jr. for the start of this third quarter. Titans again, as I mentioned off the top of the broadcast, are looking to get a, at least one more win here before heading out on their longest road trip of the season. KW will visit Niagara to begin with on Sunday. And then they head out to Restore hostilities with the Highlanders at the Center 200. That's next Thursday night, just over a week from today. And then back to back against the Riptide and the Island Storm before back to back visits to the London Lightning, although those two games are separated by six days. As we're back underway here. Out of the timeout called by the Titans. And it's going to be inbounded after the whistle call by Horton. Starks. Works the left side. Gets the screen from Hall, but again, some good defense being shown here from the Highlanders. Very good aggressiveness, even down low here, but... Rogers again working through it and there we see a glimpse of what makes him so good in the post Kevin Rogers really the catalyst of this offense so far tonight errant pass goes out of bounds and these are the kind of things that this offense of KW has to build from and take advantage of if they want to claw back into this one Here's Starks off the inbounds. Was looking for Duncan initially. Holds on to it himself. 
partially tipped away. Starks doing some tough work, splits the deep and floats it up there, but it's swatted right out of bounds by Osayande. And that's his third block of the evening. That one of the easier variety. Didn't really have to climb the ladder for that one. Nothing there as Starks was looking to get it to Hall. Cleared up top for Rogers. Able to rip it away. Horton with the three. Back rim and out. Long rebound. And it's gathered by Massey Jr. Massey Jr. Easy lay in for him. So quick. Massey Jr. And we saw it there as he hit a second gear. And able to blow by the last Titan defender. Starks. Crossover. The three. No good. Tip ball goes out of bounds, and it'll be Highlanders basketball. Last touch by Derek Hall. Quickly inbound and up the floor. And deciding to shoot, you know, smart decision at that. Mondi now up to double digits now under his name. That's five Highlanders now in double digits offensively. For point totals and Hall can't handle that pass. And that's the thing, they're gonna always have a mismatch down low with the big man, but you put a body on him to disrupt him just a little bit. Now here's a pass and nobody from the Titans paying attention. And the Highlander is able to set up for this three and that's gonna rattle in. And now this lead stands at 94-69 is quickly getting out of hand for this KW Titans team. Islanders obviously loving life so far in this first game of a four-game road trip. Starks catch and shoot corner three. That goes. Starks now 26 points, four for seven from beyond the arc. That's blocked by Rogers and knocked away out of bounds. Whose ball is it here? They're going to say it remains with the Highlanders. delay there as the officials make sure the personnel on the floor are correct. Lobbed in up top for Mondi. Decides to take the three and that one wasn't even challenged there as he was able to let it fly. Boy did he ever. Duke Mondi now the second three pointer. Hall with the quick J. Twenty-three Highlander, twenty-three point Highlanders lead. Hard screen as Ed Horton was trying to get through it. He got a shot away. Starks trying to settle on that ball. Bad pass. Horton one touch inside, trying to find Hall, and there is another emphatic slam by Tyron Beatty. And. Beatty continues to inflict a lot of pain on these Highlanders. Another three ball. And the Titans perhaps electing to take too many of those. That's their 21st attempt of the ball game. And certainly you want to take advantage when you have those looks or try to take advantage, but less than 50% from that distance. Might need to find something else that works for you. During five minutes left here in the third quarter of play, 99-74 Highlanders. Strong third quarter to say the least for them. Mondi, step back and he's hassled there by Darren Duncan. And for Duncan, that's gonna be foul number three on him. And Rick Bodifer, we mentioned, he's off to a good start in his return to KW. 10 points. And he's going to give Duke Mondi a breather. Here's Massey. Off the inbounds, takes it hard to the rack. Haven't seen enough of that from KW. Now Starks, directing some traffic, looking for Hall. He's got it down low, couple power dribbles, spinning off the hand, and no good. Nigel Tito with the offensive board, the put back there for Ed Horton after the dish from tighter.
And we would expect this, some more slowly developing offense from the Highlanders going forward. Just no more time off this game clock. Inside, five on the shot clock. Turn around, Jay, rims out. Here's Starks after the rebound by Hall. Crossover, shakes off Massey momentarily. Draws the defenders, tighter with the deep J. Not, not falling there for 34. Inside it goes to Bonneford. Foul line extended. Boisel playing with four fouls, has it tipped away as Titer had the effect of reach in. Big low. Switch defensively. And will he get some love from the rim? A couple of bounces. No, a put back attempt by Esayande. He's going to be fouled by Hall. And that's number four for the big man. And Kevin Rogers is going to come back in here. And coming off is the aforementioned Derek Hall. A couple words for the official as he walked by. Not in full agreement with that call, but are they ever? Oseande has his first one fall from the free throw line. Settles in for a second. Four for six from the stripe. Oseande. Duncan has it knocked away by Big Low. And Ali Ahmed is going to check back in now as Coach Rob Spahn gets some of his bench into the ballgame now. Up by 24 with 321 to go in the third. And here's Rogers. Rogers spinning off the glass. Tough shot again, but Rogers gets it done. Really, he and Starks have been the only ones going offensively for KW. Head fake from Loiselle. Drives off the high off the window and out. Here's Horton. One on two. Horton splits the D off the left hand. No good. Put back is good though. As Horton battles through. Back to a 20 point Highlanders lead. Driving baseline, big low. Had to step on Duncan. And for Duncan, that's going to be number four. And heading off now is Massey Jr. for the Highlanders as Reynolds will check back in. So essentially the full second unit now on now for the Highlanders. Bad pass, but Loiselle was there, back rim and out. He's been feeling it from three. Didn't fall in that instance though. Tighter on the counter, looking for a foul, maybe a push from behind. I think they had a case, but no whistle being blown by any of the three officials out there. And They'll draw the ire of the, of the head coach of the Titans, Serge Langes. After all said and done though, the Titans with a pair there. And it's the University of Windsor Lancer, graduate, tighter, laying it in. Ball fake from Botford. Drives lane, drops off Loiselle, and a charge being called as Titer was knocked down. And that's Rick Bonneford getting his first of the game. And as we get set to walk up the floor, we will soon see Ali Ahmed in your frame there. The import out of Egypt. Well, certainly an offensive leader back in his Cal State Bakerfield days. And that slam off the turnover is not going to count, but there's a foul call on Denzel James. On 
An unsporting foul is the official calling that. But going back to Ali Ahmed for a second, spent time playing for the Egyptian national team at the FIBA African Championships. And unfortunately for them, they had at that point just fallen short of the Summer Olympics in Brazil. Rio de Janeiro certainly would have been a fascinating experience for him. By this point in time, finds himself with the Cape Breton Highlanders. Averaging 8.3 points a game with them in 16 games. Here's Ahmed. Pump fake, draws Rogers off his feet. Lane doesn't go, but his teammate is there to help out that Jamal Reynolds with a putback. Second chance points. Certainly been a factor here tonight. 103 92. Highlanders up 21. Duncan driving off the window. And he's fouled as he went up, and I think it's going to be Ahmed getting the push called on him. I checked that Jamal Reynolds, in fact. And for Reynolds, that's going to be his first personal. Derek Duncan, shooting two. So it'd be Darren Duncan headed to the free throw line. As the Titans will certainly want to want to bit of a run here with the last 107 remaining on the game clock for the third quarter of play to at least challenge in this fourth quarter of play Botterford uh, James is trying to catch up to him Botterford coughs it up lunging for it Ed Horton on the floor he's on the deck but a couple Highlanders reach in now they're calling a jump ball as it was Biglow getting his hand in there too now, what's happening here? This is Greg Spagnoli stepping in and Rich Stella conversing. They're going to call it a Highlanders ball instead. So under a minute to go and 16 on the shot clock. We meet Reynolds to inbound for Key Breton. Reynolds finds Loiselle. Tighter manning up on him. Loiselle gets a partial screen inside Ahmed and almost immediately he gets tangled up with That's Denzel James in the paint. And that's team foul number seven for KW. And Ali Ahmed will Head to the free throw line for the first time today. Just two points to his name thus far. Misses his first. Ahmed, a 66% free throw shooter. Makes a second though. Ahmed, season high, point total 14, and that's going back to the start of the season against Moncton at the Magic. Darren Duncan lobs it in there for Rogers, gathers it in. One and one with Lazelle. Elects to shoot. A little short. Front rim and out. Here goes Big Low. Dishes off to Botterford. Botterford looking for another three. A little heavy on the touch. Rebound, KW. Shot clock, game clock, all but even at 17 seconds. Maybe 0.5 of a second differential at best. Duncan. Just looking for a good set here. Gets a screen from Tedder. Weaves into the paint. Nice lob in reverse. Put back slam by Kevin Rogers. Now one second, the heave from... Midcourt, that won't go well short of the mark. But will that provide the spark, breathe some life into 
the KW Titans after a rough third quarter of play. They came into it trailing by 11. They exit it trailing by 18, 104, 86. And really it's just a matter of energy level. It was there and in spades for the Highlanders in that 12 minutes of play. Just not matched by KW. Got to the slow shooting start. And it's cost them here pretty dearly. And on the stat sheet, looking at that with Almond Starks and Kevin Rogers with 26 and 23 points respectively. Next highest score though for KW. Darren Duncan, nine points. Six of those nine coming for the, from the free throw line. The Titans with just 10 free throw attempts. 10 for 10 from the stripe, they're perfect. 100% from the free throw line. Keep Breton though, nearly double the amount from the stripe. So again, just to, highlights the aggressiveness that the Highlanders have shown and taken it into the paint and to the rack. 13 and 19 for them. Bruce Massey Jr. leading their team on 10 for three shooting from the field with 24 points, six rebounds. Tydrum Beatty with 18, Duke Monty with 14, Shane Osayande with 13 and seven boards. Rick Botterford held to zero points after a 10 point first half. KW, 50% shooting for them. Cape Breton, 56 and a half percent from the field. But as the Highlanders with the 33 point third quarter outscoring the KW 33-26, who lead it by 18 now, led by as many as 25 at the midway point of the third. And the Titans intend on making this a ball game. They need to go on a run right now. Starks. Swung over once more, finds the hands of Denzel James, the right-handed floater, as he garnered some contact, will go. 16-point Highlanders lead. Backup point guard in there for the Highlanders, and Miller, and Loisel taking it hard right at tighter, arguing that his had his hands straight up, but his positioning wasn't where the official would have liked to see it, hence the foul call. And now a player down for the Highlanders and nursing, it looks to be his elbow. This is not a good sign for Cape Breton. As the training staff of the Titans out there assisting or trying to assist is this Loiselle who took it to the rim. And yes, he's nursing his left elbow there. Decent amount of pain. He's gonna be helped off or let off the floor anyways towards the bench. A couple words for the officials as he walked towards the bench Certainly nothing malicious behind that foul, though I'm sure that's what he's arguing. It's going to be Beatty to take these free throws for the Highlanders. Settles in and makes his first. Beatty with a chance for a 20 point night right here. Banks it off the rim and window as it rolls in. There's Rogers on the ensuing possession by the Titans and a foul away from the ball. And that's Ali Ahmed getting burned for his third foul of the game. Matches his point total on the night. Well, we have a second. This being the one of two games across the NBL of Canada. Moncton Magic 
picking up another victory with a, a lopsided result in their favor over the Island Storm. Magic moving the game over 500 to 12 and 11 with a 113-88 victory over the Island Storm who dropped to 9 and 11. So Moncton picking up a game in the standings against their Eastern Conference or rather Atlantic Division East Coast rival. Right here it's 106-88. Favor of the visiting Highlanders. Ahmed in the paint off the window and it falls in for him. Back to a 20 point Cape Breton lead. That shot from Sullivan misses the mark and away goes Reynolds. It's Miller controlling things. Nice passing there as it's Reynolds quickly over to Ahmed who's got a wide open lay in and Derek Hall is going to be set to come back in here momentarily for KW. And we've got a whistle on the play in both Ed Horton and Derek Hall coming in for Kevin Rogers and Denzel James. Worked over here for Sutherland. Joey Miller on him defensively, step for step. Find Sutherland again, and that's some tough real estate to receive a pass in, but it's touched out of bounds by Miller. Miller, formerly of the Westchester Knicks, of uh, the Italian Serie C Gold League, fourth tier team, Florenzuola. In fact, his head coach was his father, Mike Miller, and was also a player under his dad at Eastern Illinois, averaged just shy of 11 points three assists and two rebounds a game back in his freshman year, which was in 2011-2012. And here is the aforementioned Miller now trying to shake off Ed Horton, the veteran, providing some stellar defense. Knocked away and off the turnover. Ahmad Starks. Starks finds tighter down low and tighter after a couple ball fakes. Lays it in. He's going to pick up a foul call, too, on him. And Titer will head to the stripe for one more chance for a three-point play. So Nigel Titer will settle in rather for his first free throw attempt of the ballgame. Free throw. Misses the mark there for Titer. Big low, one on one with Horton. Over for Miller. Off the screen, Miller, pull up Jay. Misses. Here's Starks. With the running start to Sutherland. Tipped out, and that's going to be a goaltend, I would say. Certainly is, and that's going to fall for. The official by his hand <laughs> there. 110-92 now. Highlander is with a commanding lead. Nine minutes to go in the fourth. Miller plays it over. Botterford misses. Tighter with the rebound. Sutherland. Shot rims out as he pulled up for a long distance shot. Looked to be a three that was indicated as that was a spot up three. Pull up three from Beatier, and that's going to rattle in. And that's three point number 14 on the night for the Highlanders. They're 14 of 23. KW. 10 of 24 from beyond the arc. Horton over for Hall. 
Sutherland thought about it. Steps back, nearly collides with Hall there as the big man wakes his mate towards, makes his way to the basket, and there, some hard work down low by Titer, and he gets fouled again. Has one more chance at that three-point play, which he didn't capitalize on a moment ago. And for the Moncton Miracle, if they're able to hold on for the last eight minutes and 10 seconds, roughly by the same point margin, this will shape up to be their biggest win in terms of differential of the season. Looking for win number eight on the 2016, or 17, 18 campaign rather. Beatty, as he's going to draw the block from Titer and Titer can't believe it. And this crowd voicing its displeasure and their emotions are now boiling over a little bit. Again with the frustrations and with the scoreboard was presenting them now with his latest call against their home side. Now the officials are gonna get together here and talk things over. I'm not sure what this one's all about. Foul call is going to stand, and as much to the frustration of Coach Lange is looking at his reaction there after it was finally formally announced that Beattie would be given these two free throws. First one banks out. Second one is being nullified due to a lane violation. And going back to the Highlanders for a second, their highest point total of the season. They're four points away from matching that. 117 points is their season best, which they've done twice. as this game has slowed to a crawl at the moment. Off the inbounds, Starks. Thought about shooting it, finds Sullen instead. Tries a lane, pass, hit the foot of Bonneford. And just going to reset the shot clock here to 14 seconds. Brought in by Sullen. Miller step for step with him, backs off, here's Starks. Off the screen, the shot doesn't go, Hall battling hard for the rebound, he'll get the offensive board. He spins the hook, will trickle out. Tighter looking for a rebound himself and that one's off the foot of Hall, it'll remain Highlanders basketball. Back to back kick balls, one from each side. 7.18 to go in regulation. Big low spins away. Beatty. One more drop off. Miller has all day in the corner. That's maybe a shot he should be making with how much time he had to think about it. Defensive rebound. Horton on the run. Garner's contact and the foul call. Whistle may be coming a little late and Beattie again voicing his displeasure with referee Rich Stelic, trying to convince him that he just has his arms straight up, but nonetheless, it's gonna be number eight, Ed Horton, and just his second game of the season with KW. Having joined the team last week, first game on Saturday night. Makes his first free throw here. Seventeen point Highlanders lead. 
make it a 16 point lead. Starks one on one with Bigelow, finds Bodford, nearly slipped again. We've seen him slip already once tonight and it cost him the basketball and the turnover. They are able to hold on to it and then it was tipped away by the Titans. Fortunately for him, Bigelow quickly in for Ahmed. Finds Bonifert who has little in guarding him. Ahmed. Thought about dishing it outside. Move on tighter is a good one. That's gonna fall. A strong post move by Ali Ahmed. He's up to five points. Starks, catch and shoot three for Hall. That doesn't go. Put back by Nigel Titer is there though as he picks up his teammate and fellow forward, Derek Hall. Back to 16 point Highlanders lead. Miller, middle of the key. Turn around Jay and that's a tough looking shot. He executes though. Starks once more. Tighter, finally gets Horton loose, lets it fly, and that three will go for Ed Horton. Hey, they need the secondary and tertiary scoring to start going through the Titans in the latter stage of this ball game. 15 point lead and another chance to boost it yet again now with this foul call on the push. And that's Ed Horton's third foul of the game. And we'll the Highlanders will head back to the free throw line. It'll come though after this TV timeout as it's the Highlanders leading it. 117-102 here at the odd. We'll be back just around the break. Back here for the finish of the fourth quarter of play with the Cape Breton Highlanders putting up a or tying a season high 117 points with a chance with a new season high and they have it right there with 118 points for now looking for a 17 point lead and they've also got that 119 102 with 532 to go in the ball game. The Titans that have outscored them 16-13, but with a 43-point second and a 33-point third, the Highlanders can be excused for maybe coasting a little bit at the moment. But they can ill afford to take their foot off the gas as KW now attacking the rim. Maybe would have liked to see that a little sooner with these fans as they give a nice round of applause to Titer for his efforts, and he's going to head to the free throw line again. where he's one for two tonight. Just the 14 free throws attempted by KW. Again, 13 of 14 from the charity stripe. And 
looks like Jamal Reynolds is going to come back in for the Titans. Tighter settles in. These free throws are certainly important if they want to challenge the Highlanders down the home stretch. This one. First one's good. Calmly drains a second. Back to a 15 point Highlanders lead. They led by as many as 25 points in the third quarter. Stands as the game high so far. 10 points less right now, but they're still in pretty good shape with five minutes to go here in Kitchener. Hall, one on one on beating. Nearly with the trailing block. A fresh shot clock, though. Beatty, catch and shoot three, contested. That's a shot he nearly made, though. And now Starks tipping it away. Big low, trying to get back and a lay in attempt by Starks. He came up lame there a little bit, and that's not a good sign. Starks, the game high scorer, and as he went up for that lay in, something gave out there. He's going to try and tough this out, but. Starks with 26 points did not finish and the results of the turnover for the Titans. That's just the kind of night it's been for KW and really the kind of season it's been for the second year franchise. Botiford getting fouled here by Ed Horton. And for Horton, that's gonna be number four. Oh no, number five in fact. And neither team with fouls to give now. Inbounded here to Osiande. He's been on the bench for a little while. Now back in the fold with the five on the floor. A nice dish inside. Reverse lay and doesn't fall for beating again. KW unable to grasp it. And now everyone up in arms. And I think they might have a case. It looked to be last touch by a Titans player, perhaps Hall. And they're going to reverse this call. They are indeed as Rich Stelic had to overrule the official. And Coach Lange is not too pleased with the fact that the near official was blown call there. But it all results in what the Titans had wanted with a turnover on the rebound the other way. And now going up is Darren Duncan. Keep an eye on Ahmad Starks right now, still in the ball game, and Darren Duncan now will head to the free throw line with his team down 15. Gonna sell him for another two big free throws right here. And the second, it's Monday, gonna come in for K. Breton. Here comes number 11 for the Highlanders with 14 points tonight, two assists, five for 13 from the field. He gets the ball now off the inbounds. Horton, a bit of a 3-4 press here from the Titans. And that's tipped away, a nice back pass. What a job, Duncan, to Horton who lays it in. And that's going to result in a timeout call by Rob Spawn. 25 point lead in the third, down to 11. Do the Titans have enough time? 3.51 to go. We will see with another timeout on the floor. We'll be back on the other side of the break.
With 3.51 to go in the fourth quarter, it's the Highlanders holding on to a 119-108 lead now as the KW Titans going on a bit of a run. In a lot of stages of this one, and as you would have just seen on your YouTube screens, being first responders appreciation night here at the Memorial Auditorium in Kitchener. The announcer Sean Favaro getting everyone on their feet to show their appreciation for all the hard work they do in our community here in Kitchener, Waterloo, and Waterloo Region as a whole. Certainly a nice touch here on what's been kind of a frustrating evening for Titans fans in attendance as well as watching from home. Not so much for the key Cape Breton Highlanders fans tuning in live on YouTube from the East Coast. As they've been enjoying the most part of this one, but they're maybe just waiting with bated breath now as again the Titans making an 11 point game 328 as some time wound down, wound down there and now another Highlander down on the floor slow to get up it's Rick Botifer this time and that's again 17 foul for the Titans and I say again because we mentioned this or I mentioned a second ago how both teams no fouls to give any longer Getting a little food hard to you lose bodies as well as Botterford looks to be okay, maybe just winded a little bit. But prior to that, it was Kevin Moselle who was shooting the lights out from beyond three in the first half, who had to be let off, nursing a bit of an elbow injury, his left elbow, and he's got his warm-up shirt on. I think that might be the end of the night for him. Moselle tonight, three of four from beyond. The arc, three of six overall shooting for nine points. But those three coming back to back to back. Botford makes his first. And his second. Botford up to 12 points. Those are his first two points of the second half after putting up 10 in the initial two frames. Hall, Duncan, or rather Horton over to Starks. Nice crossover, but he's stripped by Massey Jr. Massey Jr. lobs it up. Botterford with the alley-oop slam. And there is the exclamation mark. And most emotion he's probably shown here tonight. Coming back to KW. Hall. Three power dribbles make that four. One too many, perhaps, as it was knocked loose. Out of bounds it goes. And it's going to be a Highlander's ball. And Hall with a couple words. He's got to be careful here. As Rich Stelic stares him down. And now we've got a foul. Check that, a whistle being blown here. And a player down with Darren Duncan on the floor. In that instance, the official had to walk away too. Just a lot of individuals here losing their cool a little bit. As Duncan got it straight in the chops. And when I say individuals losing it, Tydron Beatty not exactly very consider uh, <laughs> conservative with his usage of the arm. Now, Rich Stellick bringing both coaches together as he wants to control the last three minutes of this ball game before it really gets out of hand. So the explanation seems to suffice for Titans head coach Serge Langes. Rob Spawn of the Highlanders. A couple more words and now we're going to get things sorted out at the scores table. So Darren Duncan gets a foul call, and that's his fifth. And an unsporting foul from Tydron Beatty, his fourth. So it looks like 
The officials are still trying to talk things over, make sure they have it right, but certainly not the kind of plays you'd like to see from defenders in the league, that's for sure, as that arm got a little high. And granted, Darren Duncan, not the tallest player on the floor at the moment, but that raises a few eyebrows. Not only from the coaching staff here, but from more than a few fans. Well, after that's all said and done, we've got Darren Duncan settling in for a pair of free throws, I do believe. Are we going to start off with Beatty's free throws? And now the crew chief over Chris Delaney having another discussion with Coach Lurge Landris and Rob Spawn. Spawn and And I appreciate the acknowledgement there from the Titans fans and uh, all everyone in attendance, as well as P announcer Sean Fofaro there. Never like getting on camera, but certainly appreciate the kudos there. Yes, pulling it down solo here tonight without my battery mate, Ian Drodry, on assignment. We'll be back when the Titans remain or return from their road trip. Beattie drains a second there and now the ball will go, get rolled to the other end of the floor and Duncan will settle in for his pair. First one rattles in. Second is also good so after the dust settles, we have a 15-point Cape Breton Highlanders lead. 2.56 to go in the ballgame. Duncan. Inside it goes, Derek Hall. He's doubled. Turnaround floater doesn't go for him. And Hall, to his credit, it's been a tough night for him in the paint, working with four fouls as well and that again maybe a bit of an exclamation mark already a season high for Cape Breton and in the twilights of this ball game now with a 17 point lead KW needs a response right here won't get it Bigelow Massey content to just lob it in there and find Beatty oh, yeah. block from Blunken nope they're gonna say he got a piece of Beatty's hand who has a chuckle Walking away, certainly a mismatch, and you can see the frustration written all over the face of Darren Duncan. And for him, that's his sixth and foul, the final foul of the game. He's disqualified from the game, gets a round of applause for his efforts, but really all for naught at this point. He leaves the ballgame with nine points, five assists, perfect from the free throw line, and rather 11 points, I should say, with five assists after those pair of free throws just a second ago. Second one rattles in. Two minutes to go. Starks pull up three. Misses the mark. Defensive board by Massey Jr. Big low. Couple crossovers here. Beat Sutherland, hence the foul call on numbers nine now. And for Sutherland, that's gonna be number one actually. Kind of shocking at that point. The lone starter without a foul to his name here tonight. As the Titans we mentioned, struggling on offense this season. 110 points here tonight which is well above their season average of 97.6. But again, anytime you allow your opponents 130, well, the writing's on the wall. Horton drops off for Starks. Hall 
loses the handle. As a result of the foul from behind, though, Sayande, I do believe. Yep, double two is getting called in the foul. And with that, Beattie is going to come out. 223 points for him tonight. And over 30 minutes of action. That's a good day at the office for him. First free throw is good. And for the Titans, with the put back there, it's gonna be a little too little too late. As they're gonna drop their third straight here. And seven of their last eight games. It's gonna be a big road trip here, determining how their, the rest of their season is gonna play out coming up. And there's another three. Mismatch with Big Low and Hall forced to come out to challenge. And Paris subs here as Hall walks off and Denzel James and Arsenal come back on. Titans Elba conceding this one at this point with a minute four to go. And off goes Big Low. Just six points, but 11 assists. Certainly has been creating on the offensive side of the board. Very consistently, there's Arsenal catch and shoot three. Under a minute to go now, rolls out of bounds, and it will be Hollanders basketball. And taking it hard to the rack, Jamal Reynolds. And for the uh, Highlanders, It'll be back-to-back -back wins for the first time since December 26th to 29th. That was the only time they pieced together a winning streak of any kind this campaign. And they'll have a chance to go three straight as they head down to Windsor tomorrow to take on the Express. Now the Express, they sit second last in the Central Division at 7-11, and 11, much like these Capern Hollanders, but they're certainly a, a difficult team. The finalists from a year ago Logan Stutz just stellar for them and that's going to prove to be a tough contest as Cape Breton will make the three hour trip here from Kitchener to Windsor for that game tomorrow tighter there with another two back to 20 point Highlanders lead so the quick, two quick stops and the Highlanders will be back home for the Island Storm and St. John Rip died. And then, as I mentioned earlier, these two teams will reunite on February the 1st. Lay in there by Ahmad Starks. 28 points for him this evening. Leads all scorers. But again, it's been the offensive help that just hasn't been there for the KW Titans. Aside from Starks and Rogers, the question mark remains who's going to step up offensively? And the response has yet to be provided. Another frustrating end to this ball game, not only for the Titans, but this training staff and the fan base. A good gathering of just under a thousand fans here at the Kiss Memorial Auditorium as they watch their Titans drop. Lost number 14 on the campaign. They're three and 14 on the year. Whereas the Cape Breton Highlanders win back-to-back -back games now and their eighth win of the campaign. It was Hydron Beatty with 23 points. And Bruce Massey Jr. leading his team with 24 points, six rebounds. Antonio Bigelow with 11 helpers. And the team overall shooting just shy of 54%. The Titans back in action here at home on February the 19th against their 4 1 rivals, the London Lightning. Again, it's the Highlanders traveling down the main artery here on Ontario, down the 4 1 to Windsor for a matchup against the Express tomorrow night. Whereas the KW Titans back in action, oh, they'll need the extra little bit of a break here as they will head on the road for now six straight. Make sure to tune in for that action right here live on YouTube. But for this evening, I'm Dan Polchuk. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.